Hi, so do your Cubase projects look more like this? Or more like this? Did you spot the difference? Well, the difference is of course that in the first project there is one long audio event on every track for the full length of the song, and the second example only contains audio events on the tracks where there is actually anything happening on that track. So silences have been removed. In this video I dive into why I think example 2 is preferable, and how you can easily do that in Cubase. So let's go! Now usually when you get audio tracks delivered for a mixing project, you get them as continuous files for each track starting at exactly the same position. And they probably last until the very end of the song as well. So if you import them into your project, you basically get example one, which I showed in the intro. And that's the perfect way to exchange audio. There's no problem with that, of course, because it allows you to exactly line up the audio as recorded. Now for me, if I recorded the project myself, and as part of the editing, I will remove silences from the track where nothing is happening on the track. And by the way, I've explained my full music process in a video, which I'll link in the description. You can check it out after you've seen this video, of course. Now I do realize that it takes some extra time to remove silences from all tracks. So it may be contentious, but let me explain why I think it's a good idea nevertheless. Now, first of all, it's much clearer where a track is actually active. You may also get that from the wave display, of course, but that may not always be big enough. Some of these tracks are showing waveforms, some are not because they're quite zoomed in. Whereas on this project, for example, I don't need to see the waveform at all to see where some track is playing or not. So I think that's a big benefit. Now because of this, I also think it's easier to see the arrangement this way. I'm quite a visual guy myself, so I think it's much easier to see a high level overview of the project if you only see events where there's actually material on the track. For example, again in this project, I can see in one go, for example, that the bass, which I know is blue, starts on the first verse. The acoustic guitar over here also starts on the first verse, and apparently after the bridge there is a build-up, because there's lots of extra tracks. So the arrangement is much more visually clear, and looking at that build-up after the bridge, I think it's probably also safe to say that there needs to be some frequency carving to fit all those parts in the mix. So I know that that section of the song probably needs some extra attention in that regard, and I know that without even having listened to the track, which I have done as well of course, but still. Now, and the last reason that I like to remove silences from tracks, because it allows you to make use of the smart plugin processing of VST3 plugins, which can be developed in such a way that they do not require any CPU performance if no audio is passing through them. So this could be important if you're doing a lot of multing, or if you have high track counts with a lot of plugins, or your PC is not so capable. But in general, I think it's probably good to optimize the performance of your project if it's so easy. Now, in order for this to work in Cubase, you do need to configure it. Let me show you. If you go to Edit, Preferences, VST, Plugins, you see over here there's a checkbox that says Suspend VST3 Plugin Processing when no audio signals are received. So this needs to be enabled for this to work. Now I've seen some mixed comments on this in the Cubase forum. For example, one user managed to get rid of CPU spikes in this project by enabling this exact feature, whereas others says that this feature is broken in later versions of Cubase. And I'll link both forum threads in the description so you can have a look. But nevertheless, by limiting your audio events to where there's actually audio to be played, you can make use of this feature. Now you can of course get rid of these extraneous audio events by just cutting and fading and deleting them manually. But there's a certain feature in Cubase that makes this a lot easier. But before I do that, I see in my analytics that many of you that are watching these videos are not yet subscribed. So I would really appreciate it if you're enjoying these videos. Push the like button on the video, subscribe, and you can ring the little bell icon if you want to get notified when I publish another video. Now other ways to appreciate the channel is by using the super thanks button below. Or if you intend to buy anything at these stores, you can do that through the affiliate links in the description. And I will get a small commission on whatever you buy without any extra cost to you. Now let's see how you can easily get rid of those silences in the tracks in Cubase. One track which contains a lot of silences, for example, is this B3 high track. And let me show you how you can easily get rid of those silences. Now I'll first make a copy of this, a Cubase track version, so that I can only get back to the original unedited version of this audio. And then I select the event and you go audio advanced detect silence. Now in the waveform you can see what's happening. Basically the black part is where Cubase detects silence and the gray blue parts over here are where Cubase detects audio. And if I would now say process, you see that my event over here would be cut in, well, many different events and not correctly. So let's undo that and go back and make it detect the silences correctly. 
You can see that when I hover over the display over here, my mouse pointer turns into a speaker. So by clicking, you can listen to the audio. You can set the audio level over here for this previewing. And if you select mute gaps, then it will not let you listen to the audio, which is currently detected as a silence, for example, over here. Let's assume we want to listen to all audio. Now, first thing to do in this dialog is to make sure that the detection level for silences is correctly. Right, because now you can clearly see that although there's audio over here, it is still seen as a silence. Let's bring down this threshold significantly. Let's, for example, set it to minus 20. And you can see it's better already because it now also detected that over here there's audio, but we still want it lower. And you could also use the scroll buttons over here, but you can see that it's a bit slow because I have auto analyze turned on now. And that means that every time I change anything over here, it will fully analyze the track to see where the silences are now. So you can either turn this off, but then you won't immediately see the results. You need to push analyze to see the new results, or you can leave it on and just make bigger steps in these changes. Now, right now you can see that we have detected most audio. Now the detection threshold over here works kind of like a gate. When the signal is above the threshold, the gate will open and the audio is passed through, meaning there's no silence in this case. And when the signal dips below the closed threshold again, the gate closes and Cubase ignores the audio and it detects silence at that point. Now you could unlink both, but I have to say I usually leave them linked. Right now, I'm still wondering about this double line over here, for example, what's happening there. So if I zoom in a bit, you can see that Cubase still detects a little bit of silence over here, which we can fix in multiple ways. But let's just lower the threshold a little bit more. And now it detects the full event. Now the minimum time open and minimum time closed determines the minimum time that the function lets the sound pass through after it detects that it needs to open up. So when the signal is above this minus 33 dB. Now, if your audio contains a lot of short, repetitive sounds, which are very close together, then you can use this to make sure that the gate stays open for that full time. This audio is more sustained sound, so it doesn't really need any changes in this respect. And the same thing applies for the minimum time closed. This determines that when Cubase detects there is silence, then it will at least keep detecting silence for the next 100 milliseconds. Now don't set this too long because that means that new sounds after the previous sound will not cause the gate to open again. Now with pre-roll and post-roll, you can make this function open or close a certain time before the open threshold or close threshold has been reached. And when you look at this audio, for example, you can see that a little bit of the release here is cut off probably. And I'm also not sure whether the attack over here is not cut off. So let's be safe and let's just set this to one second before the actual audio and also one second after the actual close threshold has been exceeded, which gives us some safe values. So let's zoom out again. Yeah, this still looks good. You can see that Cubase has detected six sections. So if we enable strip silence, it will split this audio up in six different events as we want it to. Now, another thing which I always do myself is to apply fades at the very beginning or end, and you can leave that at the 100 milliseconds, but I usually make it a little bit longer. It's best to make the fade time fit into the pre-roll and post-roll time over here, so that again, you're not fading the attack of the sound or the very end of the sound. So let's do this and see what happens. So it's exactly like we wanted to. Now it does make sense to check the end of an event like this, for example, again, and you can see that this looks fine. But if you want to change that, you can always manually adjust it, of course. But the automatic detection seems to have done a good job. Now there's one part of this dialog which is skipped, so let's return to the full event here for a sec. Again, do audio silence detection. As you can see, the dialog opens up with the last few settings, but you can also add this as regions in the original event, and you can specify a region name. So if we do that, it basically looks the same, but the difference is the Cubase pool in which you can see that there now are regions defined in this event here that you could, for example, drag and drop to other parts of the track. Now in this video, I'm not going to go into the exact details and difference between audio clips, events, regions, etc. But if you want to see that video, just let me know in the comments and I'll put it on the list. Now, one final thing which I want to show you, let's go back again to the event without the split. If I select the second event, for example, this one, B3 low, and I open the advanced detect silence, then I now get an additional option in this dialog to process all selected events, which means that the second event will be processed in a very similar way. So if I now say process, 
You can see that the second track has now also been processed with the exact same settings as the first track. You must be able to use the same settings of course, so these tracks must have been recorded more or less at the same level. But this is an easy way to do this on multiple tracks and not have to do this on every single track separately. Time saver. Now let me know in the comments what you prefer for how your projects look, continuous audio files or split up. And have you ever used this feature? Any additional tips perhaps? I would be very interested to know. And if you're interested in these deep dives, you may also be interested in this video about Cubase file management. Check it out, enjoy and see you soon.